The developers are currently on vacation, but it doesn't mean that they're not busy doing things. No, in their free time, at least now that they're on holiday, they've all been given assignments. And one of these assignments is changes to the relic system. Relics, for those of you who don't know, are part of, well, the dig sites, but they can also be obtained through killing leviathans or a variety of other ways such as finishing the game or killing the endgame crisis etc even the precursors have a bunch of them however over the summer certain things are going to be changing about them and specifically some of their functionality and there is a reasonable amount of relics within the game as you can see here on your screen still though what you kind of need to keep in mind is that some of these are very very good baul in particular is so 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 good as well as the Cybrek Wars Forge. You always want to try to get these, even though these are not mutually exclusive. But you get the general idea. Some of them are incredibly good, can give you great bonuses. Some of them are a little bit lackluster, which is why changes are coming in this general direction. Now, the person who's been working on this has is PDS Iggy, and he's been working already in the past on some of the Leviathans, specifically the Leviathan Parades. And we talked a little bit about that in the Why You Should Not Bring the worm back to your capital feel free to check out that video uh, after this one but still crisis relics is something that we are going to start off with what are crisis relics well crisis relics are things like the isolated contingency core or the Perthurian brood queen these are all particular relics that you can only get after you've destroyed the end game crisis and that by itself may seem a little bit weird because these are things that you get when you've already won the game. So what can you do with these? Well, the idea here is, is that these particular relics are more like a victory lap. They are incredibly powerful, or at least they should be incredibly powerful because you've already won the game and now it's time to go completely bananas. And that's something that they're going to be doing. For instance, I don't know, the Prothorian Brood Queen is going to have some changes. Uh, right now, it has a Research Society bonus of plus 30. That by itself, by the end game, is absolutely nothing. Like, 30 Society bonus from the passive is an absolutely garbage. Like, you can just crank that out by a planet, put some labs on there, you're done. Instead, it's going to change to have a 50% research speed bonus on society now that right there becomes a lot more interesting especially as it's an endgame item and you're probably going through all the um, repeatables by then but yeah there is quite a lot of stuff to go on here so we have a bunch of things to talk about today and those are all the changes that are coming in our general direction so let's start off on the top on what is going to change here. First of all, Jovarian Pox. Now, for those of you who don't know, Jovarian Pox is essentially a precursor one where you can get some additional leader lifespan and you also unlock the Pox Bombardment Stance. Now, the Pox Bombardment Stance is a special bombardment stance that kills all the pops on the planet but leaves the infrastructure intact. Very straightforward. It's very... <laughs> Obviously kind of awful because pops are really really good, but it's something that is being changed So the passive as it is right now leader lifespan instead you are going to get the bombardment stance as part of the passive as an active However, you're going to get a 50% biology research bonus That is crazy as an active for a precursor You'll be able to go through this the, the society and biology research like absolutely nobody's business it's going to be super super quick and very very good uh Jovarian pox is going to be one of those uh relics you'll want to get if you want to get down the science route and then there is the last baul the last baul is objectively one of the most powerful one in the game aside from maybe the cyberx warfort we'll get to that shortly again it's a precursor one and essentially what it does is uh, you have a decision and you click it and you click on another planet and poof it's a Gaia world and in addition it gives you a passive pop growth speed of plus 10 percent which cannot be overlooked it is actually kind of crazy so what is it going to do well the active decision of turning a planet into a Gaia world is going to change from a instant to a five year period that's going to be a countdown and after five years the planet will turn into a Gaia world uh once you have a Gaia world if you activate it on said Gaia world 
Every single pop on that Gaia world will get Gaia world habitability preference, which means that you will get a plus 5% research output on that world. So essentially, the last Ba'ul is more useful further on in the game, because you're already turning all these worlds into Gaia worlds, they already have 100% habitability, so you're already getting those bonuses, but then you use it again, and every single pop on that planet will then get that bonus, which is really, really good, because you get an additional resource output set up. And on top of that, you obviously will get some uh, Ba'ul to join you on that planet. Usually you get around three, and now if you are hive mind, well, you will get your new Ba'uls to be hive mind as well. So that's nice. The Yuth Cryo Core. Alright, so the Yuth Cryo Core is rather underwhelming, to say the least. Right now, what you get is you get a plus one pop for new colonies, which can be really powerful at the start of the game, but overall, one additional pop in the game is not really all that great. Unless, of course, as I mentioned, is at the start. In addition to that, you get a 10-year modifier if you activate it, and it reduces your ship upkeep by 20%, which kind of can translate in some scenarios to effectively free upkeep on fleets. So... This has now been changed. Uh, instead, you will get a passive, which is the plus one pop. And instead of getting that uh, ship upkeep bonus, you will get a 20% energy weapon fire rate. So energy weapons are a lot better then. So things like lasers, things like, I think plasma is, is energy, I'm not entirely sure, but like lances and stuff like that. So just if you're about to go into combat, having an energy weapon on your ships with a plus 20% bonus is really, really good. So you do not want to underestimate that. And then we have the Psionic Archive. Now the Psionic Archive is part of the Zroni. Now, the Zeroni is one of the precursors, like the Ba'ul, that came in with Distant Stars. And right now, what it does, it basically changes the cooldown for breaching the Shroud by 50%. And you can contact a special spirit in the Shroud to give you guidance on specific matters. So, yeah, that's not all that great. So, that's, that's, that's not all that awesome. Instead, however, um, what is going to happen here is that, as a passive, you will unlock an Edict which will give you additional leader XP, longevity, and basically uh, make your leaders a lot better for the sake of a little bit of zero upkeep, which is nice. The ruler level, ruler level increases by five. It's not specified if it's just specific rulers, but all rulers could be interesting, at least ruler, uh, probably the empire ruler, I would say here. But yeah, it's not a leader, is it? Uh, shroud cooldown is there, and of course, the better shroud odds. But what do I mean by shroud odds is things like finding the um, technologies for psionics, for instance, or getting access to uh, the end of cycle, that sort of thing. So that's really good to have psionic archive for. And as an active in this particular case, uh, you will, uh, knowledge option now always levels your ruler up to a level in granting, instead of granting a flat XP bonus. So one of the ac uh, one of the options that you can have whilst going into this person, into the shroud, is to ask for XP for your ruler, so the ruler of your empire. Instead of just giving them XP, they will just automatically level up. Now, up, uh, leveling up leaders is usually quite good because of the recur, uh, because of the bonuses you can get out of it. Uh, not entirely sure if it's going to be all that good in this particular case, but we shall see. The edicts themselves, however, may be interesting. Now we get to the big one. The Cybrex Warforge. So, the Cybrex Warforge is objectively the most powerful, um, relic in the game. Bar none. Uh, it, it basically... Uh, you have 10,000 uh, minerals, it will turn into 5,000 alloys. That is a conversion rate that you won't get anywhere, and it's so incredibly good. Instead, however, as a passive that you will get right now, you get plus 5% uh, monthly alloys, which is also good, and you get the Cybex Warform. This is going to change. Um, as a passive, you will still get the most powerful army in the game, which is Cybex Warforge. Which is the default. That's the passive. You don't get a monthly alloy bonus. Which is a bit of a nerf. But, there is going to be an addition. Where you, instead of spending 10,000 minerals, you will get 5,000 alloys. You will spend 2,000 minerals and get 1,000 alloys. But every single time you use it again, it will add 1,000 to that list. So, from 2,000, 
it goes to 3,000 uh, minerals where you can get 1,500 alloys. And this can go all the way up to a cap of 20,000 alloys. Essentially, if you get this thing early enough, by the mid-game or maybe the very early late game, you can crank out so many alloys for a cost of 40,000 minerals. So say if you are like the cave dweller uh, origin, you got minerals coming out of your butthole, then getting 20,000 alloys is going to be relatively easy and cycle them through. And you can essentially build a mega structure with every cycle. That's what it boils down to because 20,000 alloys... My god, can you imagine building a mega shipyard and then getting 20,000 alloys to build a fleet basically instantly? That is crazy. The Voltum Star Perforator. So the Voltum Reality Perforator is what it's actually called. Basically what it does now, it reduces pop amenities and then you get a temporary combat advantage. It uh, there's, a, there's a list of four random buffs that will last one year. Instead, what's happening here is that the active will give you a random buff that can last one to five years. Relatively straightforward. Nothing all that uh, insane, but the Voltum Reality Perforator can really help you out when you're in a bit of a tough spot and you want to get more power on your fleets, then this is usually the way to go. Then we have the Event Relics. My least liked one is Blade of the Huntress. Now, Blade of the Huntress, what it does right now is it gives your armies a morale bonus of 25%. I hate armies to begin with, and it gives planetary sense range plus, plus, plus two, which is okay, but, you know, because visibility is all right. Anyway, this is going to all change. Uh, instead, what it's going to do is it's going to give you plus 20% diplo weight as a passive. All the other stuff is staying the same, but... Yeah, and it's removing the planetary sensor range. With plus 20% Diplo weight on a basically guaranteed uh, relic is insane. Like, that's two envoys worth of Diplo weight that you can deploy inside of the galactic community. And in this particular case, it doesn't even matter because you can put it in anywhere you want. So it's Diplo range all over the place rather than just the place where your envoys are. So that right there, pretty good. The Omni Codex. So right now what it does, it adds three random pops of its random species. That's nice. You know, three pops, right? That's very cool. Uh, as an active, that is. Uh, you still get the G modifier point, which is okay, but it's really the active that you like here. Instead, what it's, what it's going to be doing is it also adds three pops of random species, but now it's fixed so that my minds can use it as well, because previously it would generate pops from any species without the hive mind to trade, and they would instantly be devoured by the hive mind. The dragon trophy, uh, basically what it did in the past, it will give you monthly unity, which is nice, and it would give you happiness plus 10%. Uh, instead of what it does now, uh, it will give you happiness and plus 10 stability on all of your planets, which is really nice. Stability is really, really good. The late game, it's not really all that useful, but by the time you can kill the Aether Drake, you won't be running all your planets at 100% stability, or at least probably not all of them. But getting the additional stability is really nice, and especially if you've gone psionic, you get the Psycore to get even more stability, plus the um, the Black Ops Center on your uh, stations. Yeah, this in combination of that is really, really nice. Then we get to my personal favorite, the Surveyor. So the Surveyor has an activation cost of 500 energy, which is incredibly low. It's got a passive effect of sensor range, which I don't really care about. But the active effect is what it basically does. It gives you three to five rare resources, as well as a bunch of other deposits that are permanently affixed to one of your planets, so you can build a, sta uh, a mining station on it. Instead of what it does, um, it will instead do one to three instead of one, uh, three to five. So it's been nerfed a little bit, but the cooldown has been halved. So instead of 1800, it's 900 days. So you can use it every three years to get one to three resources, which translates to one to six resources or two to six resources technically, which makes it slightly better than it used to be. It's just a case of how the dice are rolled in this particular case. Then we get to the Crisis Relic. We have the Extra Dimensional Warlock. Let's see if we can find it. There he is. If you killed the Unbidden, this is what you're going to get. Right now, you get a Sublight Speed bonus of plus 15%. And as an active, you will um, increase your j jump drive range. Yeah, that's not really all that great from killing the Endgame Crisis, is it? It's not particularly all that uh, it 
it's all that great. Instead, what it's going to do is it's going to increase sublight speed by 30%, which is really, really nice. It's kind of like the strategic coordination center in that, in that sense. It adds weapon range of plus 20%, so you can engage at longer ranges. This is a passive ability, by the way. So you can just basically knock anybody out of commission. But then again, you've just killed the crisis, so anybody is probably not going to be a big issue for you but as an active it gives you the jump drive range it gives you reduced jump drive cooldown but also uh your quantum catapult is going to be more accurate it's not all that great but you know what are you going to do um it's a it's a victory lap basically at that point you've won the game congratulations you can be more accurate with your jumps the Praetorium Brood Queen, what it does right now is, it's, like I said, it gives you that Society Research plus 30. Uh, instead, it it's going to give you that plus 50% Society Research, which is good. Previously, it would also spawn a small Praetorian fleet. Now it will spawn a larger fleet. So the Praetorian Brood Queen is uh, a lot better. The Isolated Contingency Core. So, previously I had one of the most ridiculously OP effects in the game, which was Mechanical Pop Assembly Speed plus 100%. Basically, you would crank out robots like no tomorrow. And as an active, you would get a megastructure build speed of plus 300%. So you could crank out megastructures like nobody's business. So if you're playing gigastructures, you want to get the isolated contingency core so that you can take on the block ants that are coming for the galaxy. Still, though, this is going to be changed. So we still retain the passive 100% pop assembly speed. But in addition to that, it will allow the construction of an additional mega structure of every single flavor. So, an additional mega shipyard, an additional Dyson sphere, an additional matter uh, collector, an additional mega shipyard or strategic coordination center, or any of that stuff, and you can go completely ham with that. So, there you go. Especially the um, the joys of the additional mega shipyard with the bonuses that you can get on all of your uh, other shipyards and build speed is completely insane but yeah unless you're running a mod none of this stuff is going to be all that interesting then we have all the stuff that has not changed at all the con has not been changed uh basically it reduces influence claims you get a bunch of weapon bonuses is rather nice actually if you can take the con down you can get this uh the head of zarklon which is Cool in flavor, I don't like it. Spiritualist Ethics Attraction plus 40% is really super annoying if you're not playing uh, Spiritualist. So I, I can't, uh, tend to kind of annoy, uh, avoid it if I can. The Miniature Galaxy, what does it do? Can we find it? Where are you, Miniature Galaxy? Is this this? No, that's a Defragmenter. Uh, there it is. Uh, yeah, it gives you 50% tech progress and a random tech. So, yeah, nice. The Fragmenter, we just touched upon it. Uh, lost it again, but uh, essentially what it's going to do, um, it basically allows you to turn Unity into energy. That's basically what it uh, turns into. But yeah, uh, uh, monthly energy credits plus 20%. So you're trading Unity of 3,000 into energy, which is super nice. Scales of the Worm, which is the one if you kill the worm, uh, doesn't change, stays the same. Uh, it's still stability modifier of minus five. Bit painful. Rubricator, which is, I think, the one of the most undervalued uh, relic. Uh, it will give you 30 minor relics, and then you can use that to reverse engineer fallen empire buildings and finally the most the best relic of them all it is this box it is the galatron it gives you a diplomatic weight bonus of 100 percent an influence bonus of plus three and you will get free resources if you activate it it is the galatron it is the best thing in the game and uh, it is also probably one of the rarest things in the game but they all got to change yeah, most of them are going to change all 20 of them good times uh maybe we'll see more relics in the future i do hope so i do love relics i do love finding them and uh, every single time you're in the game it is different it is random and how they all interact with each other is a lot of fun so who knows what is going to happen there anyway let me know what you think about the relic changes that are coming up have you been keeping notes maybe you have and let me know down in the comments below because i'm looking forward to see what you think do you think that the scales of the worm should have been changed is the war cyberx warforts now even more op is the Ba'ul been nerfed so totally bad that you will never want to use it again? 
by the way. Uh, you always want to use the Ba'ul. It's so, so good. But yeah, let me leave a comment below. In the meantime, though, if you want to see another video specifically about the scales of the worm, I got a little video here up on the right. And uh, essentially what it does, it uh, tells you why you should not take the worm back to your capital world in a triumph. Because it is not a good idea. We'll see you in that video. See you soon. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, take care of yourself. And of course, you as well, my patrons. Until next time.